Hey, welcome back to Big Board. So if you don't know, my name's Kevin, and we're here talking about a time for trumpets. And mainly from the context of me having an opportunity to participate in the, the playtest uh, at Game On. So Bruno, who uh, designed Bulge 81 and Bulge 81 second edition and third edition, and I think uh, was heavily involved in Bitterwoods as well, obviously enough. They'd, uh, uh, there was a funny story that he told us that uh, he was asked to uh, deliver another game and he wanted to do the third or fourth edition of the, the Bulge 81 iteration and uh they they said no 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 give us a new game and he said oh okay well here's bitterwoods so uh, i thought that was quite interesting we'll get into a little bit of that i've got an interview with uh, bruno and we'll hear a little bit more about those things uh when, when, when you when we publish that so that'll be coming up in the next couple of days or so once i edit a few things assuming the sound quality is okay because we're in quite a noisy area so anyway time for trumpets do we need another bulge game? I, that, that was kind of like my first question I, I asked him and, uh, and, and wanted to understand why I really should even probably want to invest the time to play. I've been sent the rules and there's 53 pages of rules and uh, a couple of thousand counters and four maps and it's pretty glorious looking and the counter artwork is great and uh, the maps are fantastic i'll say that much right uh there's a combination of work that was done by joe yaust and then um uh, mark simonich took over from, on that project and uh, bruno himself did a lot of work uh, on the maps uh analyzing seven thousand hexes and getting the terrain right i mean that's that's the sort of detail we're talking about here when it comes to the exactitude of these one mile per hex hexes and the fidelity that Bruno's trying to achieve, which I got to respect, right? So they had the game all set up by the time I got there and uh, I'd missed most of the first day. I think I joined at the PM or the, you know, the late afternoon turn uh, for uh, the first day. Maybe it was the second day, I forget now, but it doesn't matter anyway. I think I was there for the, I was there at the end of the first day. And this is six hour, uh, six hours per turn. So you're getting a number of turns in during a 24 hour cycle. And there's a lot of activity, you know, everything's activated by core. And the bones of the system, uh, as I now know, uh, which I didn't glean from reading the rules, because I've only played Bitter Woods a couple of times, it really rests heavily on Bitter Woods in terms of its movement and some of the combat mechanics and things like that. And then the reason why this is 53 pages of rules and a very significant uh, scenario or playbook is that Bruno has, I guess, been studying this topic for decades. And this fact, this game has been in playtest for the last five or six years and being, you know, being refined and, and things like that. And then being designed really kind of since, since Bitter Woods came out, uh, the original Bitter Woods came out. And uh, if, if not before, right? So uh, he'd been prevailed upon by a bunch of people to say, hey, look, can you tell, you know, you keep telling us all these fantastic stories about the bulge. Someone's got to capture that history because at some point you're going to fall off the perch and be dead. and that knowledge base is going to go with you. It's kind of a sad thing, but hey, we're all going to kick it one day, right? So uh, this game, I think really what this game does is captures uh, the, at Battalion's scale, an enormous amount of movement and action, but knowing how to move is relatively easy knowing how to fight is very straightforward. There's a very consistent set of DRMs and column ships. And then the the supply system and command system is very straightforward. So you've got these good solid architectural bones underneath uh, this game. And then you've got Chrome. And 
this is where you if you're a bulge fan you're gonna probably gonna have to buy the game if you're kind of like me and yeah we had the biggest action that the americans were involved in and there's lots of drama and movies were made and books were written and it's a lot it's a big deal, right? Uh, largest number of casualties that uh, the, the U.S. had suffered in a battle, uh, barring stuff on U.S. soil, I believe. So, big deal. And uh, those that want to know, and those that want to experience, and those that want to uh, have the chance to perhaps change history, but within the confines of the historical narrative, will will really really like this game it's it's pretty approachable chrome uh, too uh, there are there this there's just little nuanced things that are designed to make the game easy to play i.e approachable prevent the uber war gamey uh goofy know everything bird's eye god's eye view gameplay that happens pretty much with every every war game, right? He's built rules in, in a, in a nice historical manner. It's not just, you must go do a, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's done quite well. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a sec when I, I probably just moved the camera, but that's okay. So, so for instance, <clears throat> when, when a particular uh, formation comes on board, now, for the Americans as a reinforcement, you can see that you might need those forces uh, 15 or 20 hexes or 20 miles further to the west or the east or the north or the south. But your rules were... Uh, your rules were designed and written so that the, 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 to follow the orders. So you have to go to your kind of your rally point first. And then you can go off and go do what it is you want to do. I like that. I want to have a conversation about a type of trumpets and the the game system and some of the things that I like about it and some of the things that uh, are potentially going to be tweaked and some of the things you need to be aware of, I think, going into the game, right? So... Uh, 53 pages of rules, 2,000 counters, four maps. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, a substantial number of charts and uh, the charts really are extremely well done in high production value and, and well organized, but there's a lot of them. And I think one of the things that we kind of came to a conclusion with during the play test was from a usability perspective, which, you know, I, I kind of bitch about that sort of stuff a lot or, or offer suggestions for improvement as opposed to bitching maybe. But sometimes that bitch. But uh, that w these could go on to uh, uh, four-sided fold-out cards, and there were some here that really weren't needed. Perhaps they could go on the back page of the rules or inside the uh, play a the uh, what you might call it scenario book or whatever it's going to going to be called. Uh, those types of things, I think, uh, these are very very handy, and you can play most of the game off this without having to look and you know look anything up on the rules. Which brings me the rules. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Bruno's time in the military and writing training manuals and all that sort of good stuff has really driven his approach to rule writing to be as clear and concise as possible and as simple as possible. Now, what ends up happening for me with that is that uh, I see a lot of uh, bullet points which I feel kind of mentally compelled to memorize. When in actual fact, if I, let's say, if I look at the headquarter combat units rule 2.6, there is a short paragraph that explains kind of what the rule is. And then there are subsections underneath that and each subsection is going to have, you know, a number of bullet points that are, you know, point A through F, for instance, on uh, the various HQ uh, headquarter and echelon levels. And then there's going to be you know, the definitions of the common attributes of H HQs and some pictures and stuff, which is all very cool. Uh, and then you're going to go over to combat support units, and they're all explained clearly. And so you you know you're you're going through this stuff on a on a fairly detailed basis. And I almost think that 
there will probably need to be a you know a nice clear playthrough of a couple of activations showing you how to do all the some of the administrative stuff because the gameplay itself is really straightforward moving fighting staying in supply things like that very straightforward and if you play bitter woods you'll pick it up really quickly in fact one of the guys that joined the play test on the second day or third day whatever it was uh had uh jumped right in and knew exactly what he was doing after a five or ten minute explanation uh, based on no no rules reading whatsoever um i i i i don't particularly enjoy these types of rule books because i like to read a rule book all the way through and do my highlighting and marking and things like that and then write some sort of play summary for myself or if the if the charts are really good then just use the charts this kind of prevents me from doing that because there's a lot of bullet points and i'm, and I'm trying to memorize everything and that's clearly not possible so uh, i'm gonna ha having now played a little bit i understand all the different steps that need you need to go through to execute a core activation and the formations in that core i understand how to move the units the different types of terrain under the different types of weather and uh, and uh, visibility conditions and things like that and how that impacts zones of control and all that sort of good stuff, which really is a whole other conversation unto itself. Uh, one of the things, so, so I understand how to do some of these, these mechanical things that need to be done and that's a big chunk of the rules. So I think that's a good thing. Um, where, where I hope we get to is at some point, uh, you know, the, there might be some sort of, play aid summary for the dummies, right? Which should be me and a handful of folks, I'm sure, would probably like that. But anyway, that, it's a minor quibble, very tightly written. You go, you know, Bruno explained explain something, I went and looked it up in the rules, and sure enough, that's that's how it is, how it's laid out in the rules, in your bullet point format and stuff like that. Coming back to, I talked about how the, the base mechanics are straightforward and, and easy to manage. What then layers in over that is some of the chromey stuff, and those interfaces there are, are pretty neat. Uh, so as fog falls, there are multiple levels of fog, so you just roll on a die in your weather area. There's three different weather zones uh, across the maps. You might get clear, you might get fog, you might get dense fog, and depending on the type of uh, weather you receive, that's gonna impact zones control, and it's gonna impact movement on road and off road. So this then, and because that's randomized to a certain extent, that is going to drive some of the historical flavor and once again kind of prevent some of the gamey, the gaminess that uh, Bruno has seen in other games like Bitter Woods and Art in 44 and, and whatnot. So, uh, I, I really started appreciating some of the subtleties here and was pretty impressed with it. There's a full air war in this game, surprisingly enough. And so you'll, you'll actually get to put air units down and go through intercepts and do uh, strafing runs and strikes and do CAS, do uh, ground, support, the ground support, both on attack and defense. Uh, that's pretty interesting stuff there. And that's a random roll. Uh, with the appropriate percentages based on the number of sorties that were run by aircraft type uh, in the in the actual battle. Uh, one thing you you'll realize when you play this game is the you know some of the mythology around the, this particular engagement. You know the bold the Bastogne was never really in doubt of falling. They had so much art artillery and so many troops there that it was it was pretty much a, a lock in and. You know, Lear and all the other guys weren't going weren't gonna to capture it. So uh, that will come home to you in spades unless you get ahead of the timeline. If you get ahead of the timeline, Bastogne's going to fall. So you're going you're gonna to have to work it out, right? And that's one of the neat little tricks there. We had a lot of fun <coughs> with the gameplay across the, the three different sectors. Um, excuse me. <coughs> I was going to say, I was talking about that, the chrome, the air war. Oh, the artillery is really inter interesting too, because 
The American artillery is on the map. The German artillery is not. German artillery is, is represented by artillery parks off map with a whole bunch of counters. There's probably 300 or 130, maybe? Somewhere between 130 and 300 counters that are for the artillery parks, for the Germans. And they are represented by the uh, artillery headquarter units or whatever the case might be. And uh, that, that is an interesting dynamic. And I asked, well, why is, aren't the German units on the map? And he goes, well, first of all, for clutter's sake, right? You don't want to have 300, an extra 300 counters on the map if you don't need them and explain why. And then for the Americans, because the, because the American, the strongest army of the American army in this conflict was the artillery, you need to work out how to use it and protect and that and protect it so they're on the map and they're at risk and you have to work out how to move them and then redeploy them or whatever the case or, 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 or you know move them uh limber them move them and unlimber them is what i'm trying to say there anyway so lots of subtlety going on here with this game that is not represented in any other bulge game that I'm aware of. Uh, certainly borrows a lot from Bitterwoods, certainly borrows from Vakt am Rhein, certainly borrows from Arden 44, and obviously uh, I mentioned Bitterwoods. So he, he's been exposed to and involved in all of those game uh, game designs and you know knows Mark Simonich pretty well. So they they bounced ideas around with each other. And he said, oh, you know, Mark put, uh, Mark put roadblocks in, so now I gotta put roadblocks in too, otherwise people will complain. So he's got roadblocks in there, but he does them differently. And I won't, I won't spoil the fun about how they're done because it's pretty cool and you can find out when you buy the game yourself uh, or watch me play it at some point when, I, when it comes out. Anyway, I, I came away, I, so I, I came away very impressed, let me just say that. I went into this annoyed with the rule book because I didn't really have all the charts and I hadn't really seen the Vassal module too much. I had a quick look at it, but I wasn't really paying super, super much detail. Read the rules of the night before, uh, kind of skimmed through all the, the key bits and then uh, got a little primer from, from Bruno and immediately just got sucked right into the story. And of course, the, the, the added benefit is that, you know, Bruno's explaining some of these things to you, but he's also telling you why and giving you a little bit of the background, a little bit of the story. And all of that is gonna be in the play notes, the play notes and the scenario notes and uh, all those details are being captured there. So it's gonna be like a history book and a game, which is gonna be great. Uh, at least that's my understanding of what's gonna happen with it. So. I, uh, I came away really impressed because I didn't need to buy another another uh, Arden, Arden Bulge game, right? Uh, my last foray was playing Arden 44 and attempting to play the you know highly abstracted BCS system and uh, didn't get very far with BCS, but I'm gonna give it another crack later on. But anyway, uh, this, this I think will, while it's a monster, and there are some smaller scenarios. There are one mapper and two mapper scenarios. Uh, you're, uh, you're, you, if you want to play the whole enchilada at battalion level and really get into it and have some fun, you're going to be able to do that with this, I think. And you're going to draw out all of this history that I was, a lot of it I'm unaware of. You know, there's so much nuance here that uh, that uh, you, you'll you'll have to be. Uh, You'll be impressed, I think, no matter how much of a scholar you are with this game, uh, with this period. Anyway, wanted to share some of this with you. I'll try and put these two or three videos together and we'll work something out. All right, ciao.